Hey. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. So what do I need to do? Nothing. Share screen. No, only host. All well, panelists. If, if you share your screen, we won't see you. So you probably this is is this a webinar or a meeting? It's a no. webinar. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a webinar. So okay, so in terms of the view, I guess it's whoever. Yeah, you should have some kind of like participants. Yeah, no idea. Or section, yeah. So okay, so so far no attendees. <laughs> so I just wait. I did have, like I said, four people register, right? So we just wait until you look good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go out on the lake yesterday. It was great. Nice. nice. I'm trying to work on my lighting here. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, thanks. I'm actually, I'm in our kind of back room in the den. We're doing, as I said, like a giant um, uh, renovation and, um, we're finally like it, it's not as chaotic at the moment which is great um when is, our, it, is it gonna take all summer or be done soon no it's really we're like in the um uh the, the punch list phase right now and um you know we're just sort of waiting for certain people to show up our contractor is great and he's been on top of some other people that have to come back and do stuff and you know but then there's like funny stuff ralph and i were turning on our uh some outdoor lights last night and we were like they didn't work and we we're like like the lights aren't working oh there's somebody here and uh it turned out we didn't put bulbs in them there were no bulbs in them <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny okay so i see some of our attendees are showing up hey everybody um my name is bill herbst and uh, i am with compass real estate and this is nate hill and we're just going to give everybody a, a couple more minutes to uh, show up and uh, once that happens, we will get started. So if you have any questions, um, there is a Q&A button. So please feel free to uh, chime in and uh, we'll see if we can get to them. Okay, so. Okay, awesome. Actually, why don't we get started? So I'll take my glasses off again, everybody. My name is Bill Herbst and I am a, uh, an associate broker at Compass Real Estate. And today we're gonna talk about uh, what it's like and what you need to know to buy an apartment in New York City. And rather than just have me talk at you, uh, one of our friends and clients, uh, Nate Hill, who is looking to purchase an apartment in Manhattan is, uh, has agreed to participate and he will play the role of a buyer. And this is actually a, like a for real conversation that, that we're about to have because he and I have not had this conversation yet. So um, we're gonna hold it like it's a real conversation, though at times we're gonna break the fourth wall, probably and address stuff to you guys. Um, and uh, with that, I'm just gonna let Nate introduce himself and uh, tell you a little bit about himself, what he's looking for and actually, I would love it, Nate, if you wouldn't mind, if you tell us a little bit about your business, because uh, COVID uh, has had an effect on what you were doing, but you came up with a really smart way to pivot. And I think people would be interested in hearing a little bit about that. So why don't, why don't you go ahead? Sure, sure. Uh, well, I'm Nate or Nathaniel Hill. Uh, let's see, I've been living in the city since 2012 now and uh, was an intern and student before that. So now that I'm 30, it's probably time to start thinking about buying <laughs> an apartment. Wow. Uh, my business is focused on Broadway shows, so I won't be moving to any other city. So that's good for you, Bill. <laughs> um, my business is called Broadway Plus. I, uh, I started it four years ago. And after working for a couple different Broadway producers and general managers, I had the idea to create a, a VIP experience model uh, and company for Broadway. Um, and so what I do is I help Broadway shows sell premium experiences. Um, primarily, we do, you know, we do a lot of backstage tours and meet and greets with the stars of shows. 
that's our bread and butter. Uh, and it's grown into a, a sort of a luxury travel company. So we help travelers who are coming to New York specifically for Broadway um, plan their trips, decide what they're going to see, do all sorts of awesome premium experiences um, and the like. And then I also end up doing a number of corporate events, you know, if a company wants to see Hamilton and then take their clients to drinks with the cast afterwards. That's the kind of thing I set up. So, uh, of course, yeah, yeah. When COVID hit, you must have freaked when uh, yeah. So that out. was yeah. March twelfth was like the worst day of my life. Um, <laughs> we saw Hamilton March tenth, by the way. Oh, that's right. You told me. Thank that. God. <laughs> we waited so long. Crazy. Anyway, go ahead. I heard that. That's right. You told me that. Yeah. Uh, so on that day when they announced Broadway was going to be closed for at least a month, which is now probably eight to 10 months, um, you know, I lost basically everything, but I figured, okay, well, you know, I've been doing, I had been setting up voice lessons for clients and oftentimes their teenage daughters uh, with Broadway stars. And of course, meet and greets, in person meet and greets is what I've been doing. So I put a few things online and uh, they've really taken off and people love the product, are responding to it. They're buying ones for their meet and greets for their kids, like one a week with a different Broadway star. And more interestingly, on the, on the other side, the actor said to me, oh, I've actually always needed a platform that I can use to, you know, to sell my time, especially right now. Um, and to like monetize fan engagement because you know it's uncomfortable for them to write like hey you can pay me for stuff yeah <laughs> but I'm I'm building my company and my and my website in particular into a platform where every every Broadway actor has a page says okay you can buy a voice lesson for this much you know a half hour Q and A for this much and all sorts of other things so uh, thankfully I've actually hired two people and two wow. you know, yeah. So it feels really good. And a lot of actors have told me I'm help, you know, I'm paying their rent for them. So it's been a crazy and exciting time. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And it allows you to continue looking to buy an apartment. So exactly. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's we'll talk let's to go there for a minute. <laughs> no, I, I think that's such a cool story. I, I think it's such a great demonstration about somebody who got hit with something really hard and, and turned and pivoted. And that's actually kind of what we're yeah. doing right here. Because normally we would be doing this face to face and we'd be in the same state, you know. I think we, res we were going to reske we rescheduled the three times yeah. in March because <laughs> I can't yeah. so <laughs> have a crisis. But this way we get to share it with other people. So let's talk. Now you're thinking about buying an apartment. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what you're looking for? And then if it's okay with you, I'll kind of take you through the process give you an idea of the timeline um, and uh, what sort of, what are the things that we need to do to get you ready and uh, have your team in place so that when we find the right place, we can move forward. So, so sure. tell me what, uh, what you're looking for. So I'm looking for ideally a one bedroom, maybe a studio uh, in the West Village or perhaps Greenwich Village. I know those are your specialties, which is why one of your specialties, Thanks. which is why I want to talk to you. Uh, I, you know, I don't know a lot about the finances, but hopefully I could you know, figure something out in the 700 to a million range would be my, my goal. And um, I mean, I have my little list of like priorities and deal breakers and things I don't mind. <laughs> they're, they're a little specific though. I don't know if you want those yet. You know, in real life, <laughs> we spend more time talking about those. But just uh, yeah. for, for purposes of this, we'll cut that part a little bit short. And um, we'll start to talk about how the process works. And, yeah. and here it is. Like, first of all, kudos to you for being in a position to be able to do this. That's great. At, at 30 years old. Um, it's, and I know it's a daunting process. So I appreciate your, you know, talking to me so I can kind of lead you through it. So... Mm -hmm. Just to give you a really general overview, and, and I'm going to sort of frame this in normal times, and we'll talk a little bit about how, yeah. how COVID affects this afterwards. In normal times, from the time we have a signed contract 
on an apartment, assuming you're buying a co-op, to the time we close is about three months. Um, it's a long process. Uh, there's a, uh, there are a lot of moving parts. So uh, I'm gonna kind of sketch out how it works. The first thing that we do is obviously we start, we start searching for an apartment. And uh, I guess one of the first questions we're asked is, is who pays for the buyer's broker? And that's actually, the seller pays all commissions. So when a seller lists an apartment with a listing broker, if there's another broker involved, which would be the, the buying broker, me, right. um, that commission is split between the two. If there's not, then the listing broker gets the entire commission, but the seller is still paying that full commission. And I just bring that up because people always wonder like, well, how do you get paid and why are you doing this? You don't pay anything as a buyer's broker. All you get, I mean, you get our representation. Um, so when we search for an apartment, it's, you know, there was a time when brokers had all the access to listings. That time doesn't exist anymore. We have a lot of knowledge about stuff behind the listings, things that aren't in the market yet, whatever. So we'll work together to find apartments that you like. We'll set up a search um, and we'll go through that and the technicalities about that another time right now. And, and I will add listings to it. You'll add listings to it. We'll, we'll take a look. I, I always think it's a good idea at the very beginning to look at a lot of different places because sometimes you have an idea in mind um, and when you actually see it, it's not exactly what you want. And sometimes there are things you think you're not open to and uh, you are open to them. So at the very beginning, we'll probably see a lot of different things and then pretty quickly hone in on, on what it is that, uh, that you like. And I, I can tell you that like, I always know within 10 seconds if somebody likes an apartment or not, either mm -hmm. if, if I'm, if it's one of our listings or if we're with a buyer because their whole demeanor changes and their physicality changes is actually really interesting. Um, so we'll start to do that. But let's say, uh, before we even start looking, let's talk about how you should prepare so that you're ready to go and kind of the kind of things that you need to talk about. So do you understand the difference between a co-op and a condo? Yes and no. <laughs> okay, good, good. I hope, yeah. I think all Let I me. know is that co-ops are a little harder to, the approval process is a little more difficult, yeah. but they can, it can end up being fin financially advantageous. Yeah, That's my exactly. impression. Exactly, exactly. Basically, co-ops are something that really exists in very few places outside of New York City. When you purchase a co-op, you're purchasing shares in a corporation, and basically a lease. When you buy a condo, you're buying real property, uh, as if you're buying a house. Mm -hmm. Now, you, everybody's heard about the co-op approval process, that it could be a nightmare and drawn out, and blah, 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 and that's true. Um, the good thing about it is, basically what a co-op is looking for is they wanna make sure that you have enough financial wherewithal to be able to carry the apartment for a while. So like, for example, after the 2008, financial crisis, New York City was in pretty good shape because most of the homes here are co-ops and because everyone's been vetted, um, they were able to, you, know, you don't have so many people losing their apartments or unable to afford them. So it actually mm -hmm. kept, it kept the city in strong financial shape. So with a co-op, about 70% of the inventory in New York City are co-ops versus condos, even though all the new stuff is condos now. So just uh, on that basis, you're probably looking for a co-op and given the neighborhoods you're looking in and your price range, we're pretty much just looking at co-ops. That's just kind of the way it is. The good mm -hmm. thing about co-ops is they're about 20% cheaper than condos. We like that. So, yeah, so that, that's a good thing. Now, as I mentioned, a co-op is going to look at your finances and a bit about, when I see your background, you know, they'll wanna know your, your, your professional situation, you know, just sort of, sort of basic so they want to make sure you don't have like a you know a record bad credit all kinds of stuff you know just to make sure that financially you will hang out the apartment so uh, the first thing i'm going to suggest is if you're starting to look if you can pay off as much debt as possible if you have debt you know if you have revolving credit card debt pay that off pay that down uh you know be up to date on student loan payments auto payments other rental payments 
because we want to make sure that your um, credit rating is good for when you eventually apply for a loan. I'm assuming that you're going to be financing and getting mortgage, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. So most people do. Um, <clears throat> cash buyers are great, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know how people come up with that much cash. And really, interest rates are so low right now. Like you can get a thirty-year fixed-rate mortgage for like just over three percent. That even people who could afford to pay cash are financing because it's just so much more advantageous. You normally could put the money in the market and or do something else with it and you get a much better return. So uh, co-op is going to look at your liquid assets. And liquid assets aren't just cash in the bank. They're money market funds, uh, any kind of investments accounts that you can uh, dissolve easily, you know, cash in easily, not stuff that's locked in or that you're paying a penalty toward. Mm. And generally, they look to see that, first of all, uh, Actually, let me backtrack. Co-ops will require anywhere from 20% to 100% down. Now, co-ops you're looking at are going to be in the 20, 25% range, possibly 30, 35%. But you're probably looking at 20%. Um, so right there, obviously, you need to have that amount of money liquid. Mm -hmm. Then what they're looking at is... After you've closed, they want to see anywhere from 12 to 24 months of mortgage and maintenance payments left over liquid. So in other words, can you say that again? They want to see that oh. after you close, 12, 12 to 24 months of mortgage and maintenance payments left over in liquid assets. So in other words, basically like if you had to like write a check to pay. Yeah, 12 I understand. 24, yeah. Yeah. So that's only at the time of close. You know, obviously you don't need to keep that liquid after, but that's what they're looking to see that you can do. They're also going to look at your debt to income ratio. So that's basically, mm -hmm. you know, how much of your uh, monthly income goes toward mortgage and maintenance. Uh, they look to see that no more than about 27%, give or take, every co-op has its own rules, but no more than about 27% goes toward mortgage and maintenance. Uh, and no more than say 31, 33% goes toward total debt. Now, again, this varies from building to building. There are special situations. Um, some buildings are very, Inflexible, some buildings are flexible, um, but that's something we, can, we kind of figure out as we go along the way. So those are some basic guidelines. So how does that sound? It's very interesting. I, I never knew this. Yeah, well, that's why we're doing it. Most people, there's a lot to it. Most people so, don't. But it, okay, so, so it would be, let's see. So 20%. It's going to be at least, it's between, going to be between $150,000, $200,000 down. And then cash. Okay, so on most of these apartments, the maintenance is around $1,500. And what would the 30-year mortgage be? Roughly, roughly. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not good with math in my head, but we have, <laughs> mortgage, cal we have mortgage calculators. I mean, you mm -hmm. can look online at, at any of the listings. There's a mortgage calculator and you can play well, with can it. Super roughly, so... So let's say it's a $900,000 apartment. Let's say it could be well, divided you. by, or so minus $200,000 down, divided by 30 years, divided by 12 months. Okay, so it's about two grand. Okay, so 3,500 would be the monthly mortgage and maintenance. So I need to make four times that monthly Okay, yeah, I'd be right about there. Great, excellent. Um, On the line, <laughs> what they want. <laughs> you know, sometimes what people do also, like in terms of liquid assets, there are buildings that allow gifting, mm -hmm. co-purchasing, guarantors. Right. Some, some of those things, some don't. 
you know, when it comes to a gift, generally, you know, they'll ask for a gift letter. Say your parents or somebody gifts you money toward your down payment. Mm -hmm. You have to include a letter that's basically says like, you know, I'm gifting this to Nathaniel Hill. It is a gift free and clear. He doesn't have to pay me back. You know, whether or not people do is I, I have no idea, you know, what right. people do in this right. situation. Yeah. Okay. But that's good to know. I might, I, might have, I may have some of those options somewhat available. Yeah. Okay. So then what happens is, uh, let's see, where should we go to? Okay. If you're going to be financing, uh, we should at the very beginning get you pre-approved by a mortgage broker. Um, and that yeah. way they can be sure that, and I can recommend lots of great people. They'll take a look at your finances, give you an idea of what you can afford um, and what the monthly cost would cost you. Other really, really important thing to line up is a real estate attorney. Because in New York City, uh, real realtors, we're actually agents in New York City, we're not realtors, but in New York City, agents don't prepare contracts the way they do in other parts of the country. Contracts are prepared by uh, real estate attorneys and both the buyer and the seller are represented by a real estate attorney. So let's say we found an apartment, we want to make an offer. Uh, there are really two components to the offer. The first part component is obviously the price. Uh, and the second component is basically to show that you're ready uh, to move quickly and that you will be able to pass a co-op board. So in the offer, we don't just say, you know, we're offering whatever, 750 grand. We say, we talk about you. We talk about your business. We talk about your income. It's all laid out there. Um, and we really, really spell it out. The more information, the better. So that they can see at a glance that you have the financial wherewithal to pass a typical co-op board's um, requirements. Then what I like to do also is put in some personal stuff um, because when this offer is presented to the seller by the seller's return, uh, real estate broker, they'll see it, you know, and, and so we'll put a little romance in so that, you know, like he loved the, you know, the molding and the this and the that so that, you know, so people have like a, a yeah. positive feeling toward you as the, as the seller and the, or the purchaser. And that actually goes a long way very often. So we put in something like that. Yeah. So let's say we go back and forth. We've agreed on terms at that point. We'll say, okay, we're going to go forward. The seller's attorney uh, writes the contract. It's typically pretty boilerplate. Uh, they may put some other stuff in there kind of spells out basically like the price, you know, when we're closing all that kind of stuff. Um, and in the interim, your attorney will do two things. Number one, your attorney will review the contract, make sure everything's okay, uh, add any other kinds of, of items or addendums that they want to. A lot of people add like a bed bug addendum. Uh, you know, right now with COVID, we're seeing sort of COVID clauses where people are basically saying like, look, if we don't close by X date, for COVID related reasons, meaning because everything's delayed right now, um, you know, we're not, nobody's in default. Um, so gotcha. they'll, they'll add anything to the contract that they think is necessary. At the same time, your attorney will be doing due diligence in order to protect you and make sure that when you buy this place, you know, you're, you're not buying into a problem. So they'll go and review the building's um, uh, offering plan, which is, when, a, when a, a, a co-op is approved, there's this huge book that like spells out everything about the building. So the attorney goes and looks at that, makes sure there are no issues, underlying issues we need to work out or, or worry about. They'll go to the managing agent's office and they'll read the last two or three years board minutes just to make sure there are no issues in the building or like, you know, I once had <laughs> a potential seller that I interviewed with. Uh, who was moving because he got into a fight with his downstairs neighbor and his downstairs neighbor's downtown. Luckily, they had somebody who worked in the building. But, uh, but that would have been turned up in the building minutes. You know, imagine, you know, so they look at things like that. They look at the last two or three years of the building's finances to make sure there are no issues. Yeah. Uh, 
Maybe they'll check in with the managing agent to see if there's any upcoming assessments or problems. You know, they'll, they'll do as much as they can to find out how you are. So really, ideally, from the time um, we have the accepted offer till a contract is signed, works out to be about 10 days. It's not as quick as people think because there's usually a lot of back and forth. When the attorneys have, and everybody's agreed, everybody's on the same page, you as the buyer gets the final version of the contract to sign. You sign it, it's returned to the seller's attorney with a 10% down payment check that is held in escrow. Once the seller signs that contract, we get the contract back as the buyers, it's a fully executed contract. Nobody else can make a bid. Up until the time it's fully executed, though, somebody else can come behind us um, and try and buy it out from under us. And That's like the listings that are in contract. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. once they're in contract, nobody can do anything. But up until then, and it sucks because, you know, it, I've done it from both ends where, yeah. um, you know, there's a contract out and I have a buyer who's interested, but also, you know, I remember the seller. And it's the seller's decision, not the agent's, about what to do. Um, so once we have the signed contract, fully executed contract, we start to work, do two things actually. We work on the board application um, and we alert your lender. The bank will send somebody to do an appraisal, which is basically to look at the apartment and the building and to see that the value of the contract matches up with the value that their appraiser puts on it. So in other words, if you buy a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar apartment, it's worth seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. Usually, appraisals are pretty close. You know, they they work out okay. Every once in a while, there's an issue. With various ways to handle it. Then we start working on the board application. Now, I'm sure you've heard awful things about the board application. They're pains in the ass. <laughs> but that's what we do. Um, and they're and they're changing now. You know, we used to have to, and actually, some buildings still do require like. 12 copies and they're this thick and you got to like <laughs> pop them off at the managing agent's office and bring like cookies for the managing agent. So she, you know, likes you and responds to you. Um, so that application, have you ever seen one? A uh, board yes. application? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. They'll ask you about, you know, your background. You have to have reference letters, um, personal reference letters, business reference letters, usually your last two years tax returns, um, uh, proof of your compensation, where we will have a little bit more of, I'm going to say challenge, is the fact that you're self-employed and have your own business. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have, I mean, it's the same issue that I would face if I were buying a place now. Since your income's not regular, you're going to want to see a history of, the fa of, of your earning the income that you say you're earning. So that's where tax returns come in, maybe a letter from your accountant, uh, since you know you can't get a letter, if you weren't self-employed, you can get a letter from your company saying like you know Nathaniel right. earns X a year. So that's something we'll have to work out a little bit. Um, you know, some buildings may have some questions about that, but it's something we deal with. Um, the look at that, we put the whole thing together. Um, that's really where I come in. We, we assemble the whole package. We make the copies. We bring it in. It's delivered to the managing agent. Managing agent reviews it. And really the managing agent is reviewing it just to make sure everything's included that should be included, that the math works. There's a financial worksheet. So everything in the financial worksheet has to match the backup that's included. So if, I don't know, if, you know, if, if your investment statement says you have $2,372 in it, it has to say $2,372 on that sheet. So they make sure everything uh, matches up. It goes to the co-op board. Uh, maybe it's the entire board. Maybe it's a sub-portion of the board, whoever. They review it. If they approve it, and really they're looking at your finances. Co-op boards don't have to tell you why somebody's rejected. For the most part, that's kind of what it is, though. It's, it's, it's finances. Mm -hmm. um, if they have new issues, then they call you in for the interview. And in my experience, interviews are usually more of like a meet and greet. They're pretty informal. They're not like a formal kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, and getting back to it, I always like to include a letter from the buyer, a very personal letter, like your members of the board, 
from the minute I walked into the you know, wonderful building and saw this fabulous apartment. I've always dreamed of living in this neighborhood. People love that. So that's kind of it. So we get to that point, board meets with you. The next day or within a few days, we hear back. Let's say it's a go. At that point, I close the schedule. It usually takes a week and a half, two weeks, three weeks to get everybody on board who needs to be there. Um, everybody gets together at the close table. At the end of the close, you write a lot of checks. You'll sign your name more times than you can ever imagine possible. You're signing so many documents. You get keys and you can leave. You can take those keys and you can go to your new place. So it's, it's a process. It's a marathon. Um, I'll say. Yeah, but, uh, but we get there. So that's my, believe it or not, short version <laughs> of how all of this works. So what questions do you have that I, that I can uh, answer for you? Okay, um, let's see. Well, one question that you kind of touched on is that, so because I work in entertainment, you know, I made very little money in my 20s, but now in the last few years, it's you know, gotten to where like, someone who started in yeah. banking would be. You know? so, and that was obviously a sacrifice I knew and I made. Um, I guess my question is like, do you think that's a big disadvantage or there, is there anything I can do to, I mean, I guess it all comes, it'll, you know. It's really individual. You know, the fact, as long as you're making that kind of money now and, and are in the last few yeah, years. Yeah. And I have the last two years. So that's, that's really what they look at. You know, they understand okay. it, you know, for, for the most part, probably the kind of buildings you're looking in, they may be a little more lenient. That's a, really mm -hmm. uh, you know the, a ge gross generalization um but but people understand you know okay. and um you know i know there's one building we talked about in particular i know that the, you know a lot of people in that building happen to have i hate to say like artsy backgrounds but you know they, yeah. they work in arts, they do different things there are a lot of self-employed people so people get that now and i think more sophisticated boards understand that not everybody like earns a salary yeah, you know, and if it's in New York, when so many people work in, you know, even even in, in finance, you know, very often there's a salary, you know, there's a base, and then there's kind of the back end, the commission, the bonus, whatever. Right. And uh, so people understand that. Yeah, but it's a good question. Um, how much do you usually tell someone to estimate for clo closing costs? Another good question. I would, you know, I would say around say around for a co-op, maybe three, four percent. It can change. Um, it, it, right. Different buildings, here's, here's a cost you may not know about. Um, some buildings have what's called a flip tax, which is basically, it's not a tax. Um, yeah, it is, but isn't that only the seller? Sometimes it's the seller, sometimes it's the buyer. Um, and sometimes it's negotiated. So that's something you might want to look out for. Um, you'd be responsible for paying with a co-op, uh, your attorney, various taxes. Uh, if, if you're buying new construction, it's more, it could be like four or 5%. That's a whole different deal. Um, and you're not going to be looking at that right now. That would be a, a, a new conversation. So it's mostly the lawyer and it, it would, would probably lawyer, be Lawyer, taxes, okay. lots of like taxes and fees, bank okay. fees. Thank you. Um, so you said, okay, so you said the, the mortgage rate is very good now. Yeah. About 3%. Okay. Super good. And it's most co-ops are going to want to see like a fixed rate mortgage. Uh-huh. I've been some that are a lot, you know, that sort of like look at short term variable or interest only. For the most part, they're going to look to see like a real something that they can really like count on your like they know what the number is going to be and you know what the number is going to be. After you close, can you refinance? Yes. Um, something else to talk about the walkthrough. It's always a good idea before we sign the contract to do a walkthrough because the final walkthrough right before we close is to ensure that the apartment is in the condition that it was in when the contract was signed. 
Mm -hmm. People sometimes have a misconception that this is the time to be like, oh, this is cracked. This is broken. This, you know, that's the final walkthrough is not the time to do that. And unfortunately, sometimes you end up getting in these situations where you're supposed to close in half an hour and people are arguing about like, you know, a burner that doesn't work. Um, And it gets pretty heated. So it's always a good idea just to check all the appliances. Uh, Contracts usually say as is, but you never know what that means. And, And you always do want to do a final walkthrough before the close too, because you never know. I've heard of situations where, you know, like really like, like places like burned down or a pipe burst right before people were supposed to close. So you don't want to be in a situation with that, like, like that. Yeah. Another thing I want to point out when you look at co-ops, there are two monthly, well, there's one monthly cost, which is the maintenance that Mm -hmm. includes the tax in a condo, your common charges and your taxes are two separate charges. So also if you're looking at a listing and you're not sure if it's a co-op or a condo, look at what the monthlies are and see if they're broken out. If they're combined, it's probably a, a co-op, but if they're not, uh, gotcha. it's, okay. it's common. Um, so I'm not, I mean, as I mentioned, I'm not in a big rush. Would you guess that it might be advantageous to wait until this fall? Do you think prices are probably going to go down a bit? You know, it's, it's been interesting. So far, we haven't seen that, but we haven't seen a huge volume of transactions. Um, I don't know. I mean, we're also seeing there's a, a lot of inventory has either come off the market or not come on the market. That normally mm-hmm. would. Mm-hmm. So there is going to be less inventory and less choice. So, you know, I really don't know. We've, we're, we're kind of trying to figure out what it is. Sure. Um, I, I think... The, and, and tell me if this worked for you. I think the most important thing for somebody in your position right now is just to kind of like keep an eye on the market, keep an eye on what's out there, get educated. Um, normally I'd say, you know, we can look at some stuff just to get you, give you an idea out there, but we, we can do it online. Um, just so that when you feel comfortable moving forward, you have an idea of what you want, um, what appeals to you, what doesn't appeal to you and, and what it's going to cost. Yeah. You know, the most important thing is that it, obviously that it, it works for you and that you feel ready to do it. Okay. My last two questions are a little bit more about like apartment hunting specifically. Okay. <laughs> um, I know that it varies a lot, but let's say we see an apartment, but like the bathroom or the kitchen specifically, like they're going to have to be updated. What do you, and obviously you can spend as much as you want, but like, what do you usually tell people it costs to redo a bathroom or a kitchen? Like, yeah, it's, you know, it's a pet. Yeah. It's the same I know. Kind of well, like, what's, a, what's a good minimum that it's not completely Ikea? <laughs> I have to tell you like our kitchen. Or maybe there, it is. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. It looks, they do a really good job. Um, no, sorry. I didn't mean it's that. It's not actually. completely <laughs> Ikea. It's not completely Ikea. <laughs> but you know, it, it depends, you know, a kitchen can be 20 or 30 grand. Uh, a bathroom can be, I don't know. If you watch Flip or Flop, a bathroom's three thousand dollars, which is that ain't New York. Uh, yeah, you no. Know, it's bucks. But you know, something else to take into account is um, depending on the price of the apartment, um, we could take that into account with our offer or not. Right. You know, sometimes people right. have taken that into account with their pricing. Sometimes they haven't. You know, if, yeah, and, and just so you know, if you want to do renovation in a co-op, it needs to be approved by the co-op. Yeah. You have to get personnel. So it can be a, yeah. it can be a process. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we've all done it, you know, it, it happens all the time, but um, no, it's, it's a good question. It's a really good question. So maybe like bathroom roughly 10 to 20, kitchen 20 to 30. Yeah. Is a safe starting point? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. And it could be less because you know, the size of the bathrooms and kitchens that we're talking about. Yeah, right now, no, I know. You know, it could easily be less. Um, okay. And the other thing we can do is there are plenty of contractors who are happy to come in and give you an estimate. Get like a quote ahead of time. Yeah. As part of the process. You know, yeah. You know, what's there's, I have some people that I work with who can, who can do it. You know, they do it with the hopes that you work with them. Of course. Um, yeah. So, but you don't have to. <laughs> okay my last question is what do you usually like what do you advise people to sacrifice in order to like 
get a better deal or I don't know, I don't know if I'm asking the question. I know what you mean. Clearly, I know what you mean. It's yeah. a really, really good question. <laughs> um, I, I think it's, it's up to you. For some people, location is really important. For some people, size is really important. Um, in our case, you know, we bought a, a slightly smaller apartment so that we can be in the location that we wanted to be in. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really up to you. If you have some non-negotiables, we put them first. But there are other things. You know, everything is, you know, Ralph always says it's like a stereo. You're always like turning the, the buttons to sort of get mm. closest to what you want. I mean, I will tell you at every price range, buyers we work with, uh, I've worked with buyers who bought, you know, $300,000 studios and buyers who bought $5 million apartments. Nobody feels like they're getting everything they want. Sure. Yeah, yeah I understand that. Yeah, so it's really it's it's really about you. For some people, I I would say that you probably want to keep resale value in the back of your mind, and maybe not. You know, you may not want to buy something that unless you fall in love, like that's super quirky. Um, but if if you don't think this is going to be your forever home, uh, you know, right. even when it, it comes time to redoing it and stuff, you may want to sort of stay slightly more neutral and. You know, but maybe not. It's you know, man, like the process is it's 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 always about you and, and what works best for you yeah. in your life. Well, but thank I think you. Yeah, this will be your next. No, thank you. I hope that this was helpful. Extremely um, good. It was certainly I learned so helpful, much. Helpful for me. Thank you so much. Good luck with your business. It's awesome. I'm gonna tell everybody to go to Broadway Plus. Broadwayplus.com. Uh, thank you. Uh, Take a look, and um, in fact, I also have a couple of uh, performers I know who I want to introduce you to who can probably- Oh, good, that'd be great. Yeah, make a little bit of money. So, terrific, well, thank you so much. Um, we'll talk offline and we'll start thinking about a search or, uh, you know what I'll- Thank we'll you, it was fun. Yeah, me too, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye, Bye. take care, thanks everybody, bye.